Good afternoon. Welcome to our Reimagining Policing Pledge virtual workshop series, uh, which we're proud to co-host with our friends and partners at Cities United and the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights. This workshop series is a part of our Reimagining Policing Pledge that we launched uh, with President Obama last month. Uh, to date, more than 150 mayors have publicly committed to the pledge, uh, and we're currently betting hundreds more that put submissions in through our websites. Um, over the next 90 days, we are honored to have the chance to support mayors and your teams uh, that have committed to review and reform use of force policies is just the beginning. Can you talk about the key reforms that the Leadership Conference advocates for and as part of that, the evolution of policing reform that you've seen throughout your career as you've worked on this work? There's often a desire to go to one reform and hope that it's gonna solve all of our problems. A lot of us saw the rush to body-worn cameras as like the policy solution that was gonna save the day. Um, and unfortunately, policing just doesn't work that way as is the case with many institutions that are complex. Um, and that one of the reasons why the Leadership Conference actually launched this report and this initiative a year and a half ago called the New Era of Public Safety is to aggregate the kind of best practices around the country that police departments are deploying. Everything from use of force and the ways in which use of force needs to be handled in the 21st century, looking at de-escalation, duty to intervene, duty to provide medical aid, looking at accountability systems without training at the front end and accountability at the back end. None of these policies will make a difference. There's a difference between police reform and policing reform. Too often we focus on police reform, which is suggesting that the vast majority of cops in this country are racist, bad, and we need a new batch of cops to come in. Versus policing reform is about the policing system, recognizing structural racism still exists, recognizing we have systemic failures, stepping away from the bad apple argument, and recognizing it's not the few bad apples. The barrel itself is very bad. The system was designed for a specific purpose in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. It was a system designed to enforce Jim Crow laws and black codes. Once we basically quit making the officers the target of the anger, not the individual behaviors, but from a systemic point of view, then we bring them to the table. If we're gonna reimagine public safety, but well, we know they have a role in it to be able to say, what is it that we should not do right now? And what's the, what's the kind of resources we can then reallocate? What is it that we should not be doing in the future? And where should we then invest the reallocation of those resources? and then take a look at the systems that we do have and how do we restructure them so that we can erase structural racism. We've found that oftentimes that data and science can be the table you can sit around and you can trust a process when you can't trust each other, right? Um, the things that many of the activists and organizers are asking for, the chiefs have been asking for for the last quarter century. You ask us to do too much. Um, we can't possibly get trained for all of this. I don't want my officers responding when someone's got an overdose. When someone's worried about killing themselves, a badge and a gun are not the right set of resources. So it turns out the interests of these two different groups are the same, but the history between them makes it very difficult to trust. So what I would recommend is you work backwards from the outcomes you want to see. If it's police reform, measure justice. Well, you bring up the fact that it's not just one policy change, um, but it has to be a whole holistic systems change. How do you suggest that like a mayor embark on such a thing? Just look at your departments around how your departments are in, in other social systems actually are resourced to deal with homelessness. Uh, people in mental health issues, school discipline. You won't find a police chief or a police officer that doesn't understand pretty directly the degree to which they have become unwillingly the first responders on too many social issues because those are the laws that their state passed or that's how the budget has kind of structured funding and resources. There are ways to actually demonstrate a commitment to thinking more broadly about public safety by looking at some of these issues. You gotta have culture change, you gotta have courage, you gotta have conversations, right? You gotta start putting the, the, the stakeholders that we talked about today in the room together to have uncomfortable conversations and facilitate those conversations and come up and, and co-create together. You also have to have a community-driven, community-created plan that says what happens next, says how those funds are reallocated, that has real teeth 
with the community having a real say into policies in your police department and policies in, in, in the city government or how the police work and how, you know, the community is going to have fairness in the process. Make sure that in responding to the passions of your community, that you understand that the community deserves a plan. Start to accumulate the facts that will allow you to put a responsible plan together. We ask law enforcement to acknowledge the historical past. I think mayors need to do the same thing. You need to stand at your podium, use your platform to acknowledge that there's still structural racism in law enforcement. It's not an indictment on your officers, it's an indictment on the system in which they're operating. That truth is very critical to moving forward. Every time we ignore our history, we ignore what's happening today, we have fatal consequences. You are where the rubber meets the road. You have to be the one to be the truth telling, lead the reconciliation that we've never done and be able to challenge the system itself. Even if we call dismantling it and reconstructing it, I've been in this game for 35 years and I've never seen a moment like this.